welcome as in the last lecture we were discussing about the convergence of the Fourier series in terms of the Cesaro summability and what we have seen is that if f is a continuous function at x naught then we reach up to the st stage where we computed f convolution of f n at x 0 minus of f of x 0 is lesser equal to the integral is uh, broken into two parts one was near 0 and another is away from 0. So, now this is f of x naught minus of y minus of f of x naught and then this is f n of y dy. As we have seen that this is uh, lesser equal to and f is uh, this is less than epsilon by 2. So, we have get that epsilon by 2 then 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi to pi because I can enlarge mod y less than delta to y varies over minus pi to pi that is a bigger set the in integral is going to dominate the previous integral and then plus 1 by 2 pi integral mod y greater or equal to delta. Now, this is the soup of f of x naught minus of y I can pull it out and one from here by triangle inequality I get this f n y dy. Now, for n greater or equal to n sub naught we have this is less than epsilon by 2 this is nothing but equal to 1 plus this is uh, this is less than epsilon now which is less than epsilon by 2 plus epsilon by 2 which is equal to epsilon. So, therefore, for all n greater or equal to n sub naught we have got this that f convolution of f n thus f convolution of f n at x naught this converges to f of x naught as n goes to infinity. Now, the second part of the theorem says that if f is a continuous function on minus pi to pi then this convergence is uniform that means it should the n sub naught what we are going to get it is uh, not dependent on x. Now, here exactly if you see closely the proof of uh, Fair's theorem at the point of continuity is that you know if f is a continuous function on this compact interval then it is uniformly continuous. Therefore, the choice of delta is independent of where our x is. Therefore, we are getting a delta which is independent of x and rest of the thing and the tail of if we are taking large n then the area covered by mod of f and y this is going to be small. Therefore, there is uh, nowhere we are going to get the dependence on x because of the uniformly continuity hence if f continuous then as f is uniformly continuous f convolution of f n of x converges to f of x uniformly. So, this is uh, 
very very interesting and also now one would like to ask if f is not continuous only Riemann integrable 2 pi periodic Riemann integrable function then can we recover our f in some means. So, this is I can say the corollary if f is Riemann integrable then 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi to pi mod of f convolution of f n of x minus of f of x dx this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. The proof is a standard approximate technique uh, which says that for this f Riemann integrable there exists a sequence of continuous function uh, the properties of the Riemann integrable we have integral 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi mod of f k of x minus of f of x dx this goes to 0 as k goes to infinity. That is what we had seen in while recalling uh, the Riemann integration and we also have used this result in the convolution property. So, therefore, what we have minus pi to pi mod of f convolution of f n of x minus of f of x dx. This is I am going to add and subtract minus f k convolution of f n of x plus f k convolution of f n of x minus f k of x plus f k of x minus of f of x. I am adding and subtracting. So, by triangle inequality this becomes minus pi to pi mod of f convolution of f n of x minus f k convolution of f of x d x plus f k convolution f n of x minus of f k of x d x plus 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi to pi mod of f k of x minus of f of x d x. Now, as we have seen that this goes to 0 as k goes to infinity and this converges as n goes to infinity for each k f k are continuous function. So, this converges to 0 as n goes to infinity and now we need to worry about the first part. Let us call this as i 1 plus i 2 plus i 3. Okay. So, now i 1 is equal to 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi mod of f minus of f k convolution of f n of x dx. This we have seen in the properties for convolution is that this is lesser equal to 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi mod of f minus of f k of x dx plus into 1 by 2 pi 
integral minus pi to pi mod of f n x which is f n x d x. Now, this by our observation that this is small. Now, this is small for large k and this is small. So, to be more precise, this one is saying that for epsilon, there exists a, let me write this as star. So, star says for epsilon positive, there exists a k naught such that 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi mod of f k of x minus f x d x is less than epsilon by 3 for all k greater or equal to k naught. Now, for this k naught you can get choose only that k naught. Therefore, what we are going to get is that this is less than epsilon, this is 1. So, I 1 is less than epsilon by 3. Now, I 2, so therefore, an I 2 is less than epsilon by 3 for some n, for some sub n sub naught, for, for all n greater or equal to n sub naught, because that is what uh, uh, we have seen because uh, f k naught is a continuous function. Uh, by our previous thing, it is a uniformly it convert f k naught for two. This is f k naught convolution of f n. This converges to f k naught uniformly. Therefore, I can pull that epsilon out and this is the length is 2 pi and gets cancelled and I 3 is again less than epsilon. Hence, the result. Okay. So, now what although what we uh, we might not have a point wise convergence uh, if f is just a Riemann integrable function but certainly under the integral it converges to f. Because as we know that if I change uh, a function in few points, couple of points, then obviously integral is not going to change at all. So, it is uh, natural for just for a Riemann integrable function, we need to consider the convergence under the integral sign. But however, if there is a continuity, then we know specifically that at this point we cannot tamper with the f. So, that therefore, it makes sense for talking about the convergence when the function is uh, continuous. Okay. So, now let us see what are the application what we are going to get uh, here. So, there are few more observation we want to do about the fair kernel. So, uh, now natural thing is that we would like to ask what is the Fourier coefficient of a fat of n. Now, as you can see that this is nothing but summation over mod j lesser equal to n. 1 minus mod j by n and then this is minus pi to pi by definition 1 by 2 pi factor will be there e to the power i j minus of n x dx. Now, this is again going to survive when j is equal to n otherwise n is equal to j otherwise it is not going to survive. That means, j is varying from minus n to n. Therefore, our n has to be lesser equal to capital N. Therefore, this is equal to 1 minus mod n by n if 
mod n is lesser equal to n and is equal to 0 otherwise. Therefore, the Fourier series of F n is summation over mod n lesser equal to n 1 minus mod n by n e to the power i n x and this is nothing but a trigonometric polynomial. So, the food now from this the Fourier series of f convolution of f n is now we know that f convolution of f n hat at n this is equal to f hat of n and f n hat at n. Now, this only survive if mod n is lesser equal to capital N. Therefore, the convolution f convolution f n Fourier coefficient is going to survive only when mod n is lesser equal to capital N. Therefore, Fourier series is going to be a finite sum. So, this is equal to mod n lesser equal to n. This is 1 minus mod n by n f hat of n e to the power i n x. Again as you can see that f convolution of f n is nothing but a trigonometric polynomial. So, this is a trigonometric polynomial. Now, we have corollary let f and g be continuous function such that f hat at n this is equal to g hat at n for all n belongs to z then f is equal to g. So, now what it is saying this is the Fourier transforms uniqueness if f hat of n is equal to g hat of n then f has to be equal to g. So, in order to prove this it is enough to show if f hat of n is equal to 0 for all n vary over z then f is nothing but the constant function 0. Why is that? That is if we have this result then we can get the corollary because you consider h equal to f minus of g then h is a continuous function then h hat of n this is equal to f hat of n minus of g hat of n. Now, because f hat is equal to g hat this is equal to 0. Now, if we have that if we assume this statement then this will going to say that h is equal identically equal to 0 this implies that f is equal to g. So, it is now we want to prove this. Now, as you can see f convolution of f n of x this is going to be equal to f is a continuous function f convolution of f n x by this formula this is a trigonometric polynomial. So, therefore, what we had observed that the trigonometric polynomial Fourier series is the same. So, now is f hat of n if we are putting it to be 0 then this is equal to 0. And now this is a sequence of continuous function which is 0 and we know that this converges to f uniformly. And so, the sequence of 0 is going to converge only to 0 thus as f convolution of f n converges to f this implies that f is equal to 0. So, now this is the uniqueness. Now, once we have the uniqueness we can 
so now as a matter of fact here let us come back to this. So now what it is saying is that Fair had answered the question if we get f hat of n then we can construct f convolution of f n capital F n by this. So, this is going to be f convolution of capital of f n of x. So, only on known thing is that f hat of n. So, once we get f hat of n, we can compute f convolution of f n and fair guarantee is that this is going to converse to f. So, we can actually reconstruct our f if we know f hat of n. So, another uh, interesting corollary what we suppose f is a continuous function and f is a continuous function and summation over n mod of f at of n is finite then then summation of f hat of n e to the power i n x that is the Fourier series of f this converges to f of x. That means, the Fourier series if it is converging to some function then this corollary is giving us the guarantee that that function is nothing but f itself. The proof follows from the uniqueness of the Fourier coefficient. So, suppose summation over f hat of n e to the power i n x as uh, because we have imposed this summation over mod of f hat of n is finite therefore, this series converges. Now, this converges to some g x. Now, if we compute g hat of n this is equal to 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi summation over n varies over z f hat of uh, uh, sorry j j e to the power i j x and e to the power minus of i n x d x. Now, because it is absolutely summable, so I can pull out the sum outside the integral. So, what we have got is nothing but f hat of j 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi e to the power i j minus of n x dx. Now, the orthogonality relation of e to the power i n x will tell that this is going to survive only when j is equal to n. So, therefore, this is this is nothing but equal to f hat of n and this is true for every n. all n varies over j. Therefore, by the previous corollary we have f of x is equal to g of x. So, we have answered successfully the question what we have asked uh, that if the Fourier series converges then is it going to converse to the function f or not. What we have answered if the Fourier series converges absolutely then it has to converse to f. Okay. So, now some other uh, implication of the Fair's theorem is we can right that we know the Westra's theorem which tell us that 
if we have a continuous function then it can be uniformly approximated by a sequence of polynomials that was what the way stress theorem we know. Now, here what fair theorem is saying is that every 2 pi periodic continuous function can be approximated uniformly by a sequence of trigonometric polynomial. What do I mean? Suppose f is a continuous function, then there exists a sequence p n of trigonometric polynomial such that supremum of x mod of f of x minus p n of x this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. Now, the proof is uh, fairly simple already we have observed this because now what is the candidate for our p n the trigonometric polynomial this is nothing but f convolution with f n of x. And what we had seen is that this is a trigonometric polynomial and if f is a continuous function, we have seen that this sequence converges uniformly to f. That is what the corollary is. So, now this is a very uh, uh, interesting thing is that if we have this, then we can get our classical Weierstrass theorem. So, what does it say? I will give a sketch of that. Uh, it says that if f is in c minus pi to pi, let us take, then there exist polynomial, sequence of polynomial, let us say p n such that supremum of x mod of f of x minus p n of x, this is less than epsilon. So, now this by fair theorem, we have f minus of p n x goes to 0. So, each of this uh, p n the trigonometric polynomial is going to look like some mod n less or equal to n a n e to the power i n x. Now, as you can see e to the power i n x for each fixed n e to the power i n x is equal to cos n x plus i sin n x. Now, we know the Taylor series of the cos n x and i sin n x and we know that this convergence it can be approximated by polynomial because if you write down the Taylor series of uh, sin and cosine that is nothing but a polynomial plus uh, the error term and so all these things e i n x can be approximated by the polynomial. Therefore, the linear combination finite linear combination of uh, this is a n times e to the power i n x can be approximated by the polynomial and hence the Weierstrass classical theorem that every continuous function can be approximated uh, by the 
polynomial. So, this we can also derive from the Fair's theorem. Thank you.